Hello everyone, this is Christian Mataraz and I'm do going to go through the process of manually posting from a uh, special journal into the general ledger account. Now the reason that this is important is because very often students will find that they've made a mistake and they're out of balance and they'll spend hours and hours and hours of time trying to figure out where they went wrong. And it usually comes down to the fact that they just are not following the process in posting. So here's a sample of some entries there's only you know there's six entries all together here um, three transactions so what we do is as we're entering these transactions and i see that there's something for vita needle the first thing i need to make sure is that the subsidiary accounts are updated right on the spot i don't have to worry about the totals yet because in the special journals we just post the totals but i do need to make sure that i record in the subsidiary ledgers when a transaction occurs so I'm going to say the Vita, Vita Needle has a $3,400 credit to their account. So what I do is, I'm just going to copy this. If I go Vita Needle, and I go to my accounts receivable, Vita Needle has a, and I'll just double check it, $3,400 credit. So I say that on the 10th, there was a $3,400 credit. Figure out my balance, so my balance be zero. This came from my cash purchase or cash receipts journal, page four. So I say cash receipts journal, page four. Go back here, and I place this. Copy this, and paste back mark. And that shows that I've done the subsidiary ledger. Then I do the same thing. I do the next transaction. So I record 3,900, 3,900. I recognize that it's for Accupac. So $3,900 credit to Accupac. I go to where it says Accupac. And I say the $3,900 credit. I adjust the balance to be zero. I record the check mark in here. That's check mark that do for my purposes right now. I go back to my cash receipts journal and I say that I've recorded the subsidiary ledger account. The last one is actually a cash sale, and this cash sale was going to account for a thousand. Um, so because it's a sundry account on this date, I would say there's fifty four ninety five going to the account, and in this case it's going to be account four thousand. So I go to the ledger page and I say account 4,000. There's account 4,000. It was on the 30th. It was a $4,000, or sorry. Back and check to make sure I know what the amount is. It was 54.95. Go to the ledger account. And I say it's 54.95. Balance is that. I recognize that it, this balance is a credit balance, so I'm not recording what type of transaction. I'm recording the balance there. This is from the Cash Receipts Journal, page four. And I go back to the Cash Receipts Journal, and I say it was posted to account 4010. Now, the next thing I do is I've done the transactions. I'm now going to um, total the columns. I'll just use the Excel functions here to total the columns. I'll copy that over there. Copy that over there. Now I want to make sure that my columns are actually balanced because this is the first spot where I'd find a mistake. So I go and I say I have debits, credits, and credits. So I've got 12,795 debits. So I can even down here just say here's my debit total, here's my credit total. And it's going to be a combination of this credit total and this credit total. And do the numbers match? Yes, they match. So now I've um, totaled, I've footed my totals and I've cross balanced. So I've made sure that I've cross checked it. It's cross footed. It's done. I can see my debits equal, equal my credits so I know that this information is correct. Next step is debiting, sorry, is recording and posting these column accounts to the proper general ledger account. So if you remember in the Sundry account, I've already posted this stuff. So right now I'm just going to put an X 
to indicate that I don't need to do this column. Hash column, 12795. So I'm going to go to, and this is the process. Okay, now this is really important. I don't just say, well, this is going to be account uh, 1000. So I don't go in here and write down 1000. The first step I do is I say it's 12795. It's going to account 1000. That's a debit, 12795. I figure out my new balance. It's going to be a debit balance. It came from the cash receipts journal, page four. I go back to the cash receipts journal, and I say that I recorded that number to account 1000. And posted, as soon as I do that step, that says I've done the recording. So the process is important because if I just sit here and say, well, this is going to be the accounts receivable account, so that's account 1020. So to save time, I'll say account 1020, and then I'll go and post it. And I'm about to go and post it and then my phone rings or something happens or my child falls and gets hurt or my spouse comes home or any number of things can happen. And according to this, this number has already been posted. So if I get pulled away from this computer and I come back or in a real life situation, you get pulled away and somebody else comes back because they have to cover for you. They will look at this and they'll say that this number has already been posted and it hasn't. So this is where a lot of the mistakes show up. So I get rid of that because I haven't posted it. The process is figure out what the number is. I actually write the number down or I put it on a calculator beside me so I don't forget what it is. It's going to the accounts receivable and it's a credit. So I go to the general ledger account. I go to the accounts receivable. There is a $7,300 credit. I update the balance. The balance will be a debit balance. So I put that in. This came from cash receipts journal, page number four. Back to the cash receipts journal. I see down here that I posted it to account 1020. So here I posted this to account 1020. Now all of my columns have been posted. If you follow this process, if you do the cross footing first and you follow this process step by step, so it's back and forth, but it's it's not back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's, I start here. I say, this is the number I have to transfer. I go over here. I do all the transfers. I do the balance. I say where it came from, it came from there. I go back and then I say, where did it go to? So it might seem like you're doing a lot of back and forth, but you really have to trust me on this. Trust the process because if you don't and you're out of balance, it ends up being a nightmare because more often than not, it's because somebody's gone along and they've had a journal and they've had a bunch of stuff and they've been going through and they've been recording these numbers as they went along. And then at the end of the day, they're like, oh, I forgot to put in my posting references. So I better put in, there's that posting reference and, and I better put in that posting reference and that posting reference. And I'll say, oh yeah, that's right. It gets account 1040. So I did that and I did that. Oh yay, I'm going to get full marks. But then you're out of balance and you end up spending hours and hours. These transactions, these, these assignments that you're doing, there's really 30 transactions. So every transaction should take, even if it takes at the most two minutes, and two minutes is a long time for a transaction, this, this assignment should really take about an hour. And I hear students saying that it's taken them eight, 10 hours to, find, to do this stuff. And most of the time it's because they haven't followed the procedures. Okay, so that's all I wanna say about that. And you should be getting ready to work on some projects and things, but I just wanna let you know that posting process is really important. And I can tell as well, I can tell when I see that people have written down posting numbers and they don't show up as being posted that they're not following the process. Okay, so good luck and take care.